As I'm sure you know, photography is quite an expensive hobby and I've been throwing money at different things to try and get better for well over 10 years. What I'm gonna do in this video is break down the six things that I think are the biggest wastes of money and essentially are things I regret buying. And I think as we get further through the video, they probably get a little bit more controversial. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Photography can be quite tedious. It's hard getting better and it takes a long time and we can often convince ourselves that by buying new things, that's gonna be a shortcut. But unfortunately, in the majority of cases, that just doesn't work. I know, because I've attempted these shortcuts. So I'm gonna try and save you some money and also give you some guidance as to where you might wanna put it instead. The first thing is things to protect your kit. Things like lens covers or pouches and UV filters, for example. Photography equipment is so well made now that I just don't think these things are necessary. They're just an added complication for when we're in the field and we're trying to do things quickly. They're just things that get in the way. Cheaper UV filters can also have an adverse impact on our image quality. And like I say, I just don't think they're needed. The stuff is made so well that it is actually really hard to damage. And believe me, I've tried, not necessarily intentionally. I don't often even use lens caps on my lenses and I just throw them in and out of bags and I just treat them as the tools that they are. I do care for them, don't get me wrong. I'm not throwing them here, there and everywhere, but I don't look after them necessarily. But in the 10 plus years I've been a professional photographer and filmmaker, I've never had an issue with any kind of damage to anything that would have been solved with one of these sort of lens pouches or a UV filter. If you are desperate to invest your money in something that's going to protect your kit, then I'd probably recommend insurance, to be honest, because insurance is something that has paid itself back to me in the past. The second thing is tripods, and my garage is like a tripod graveyard. I think with tripods, up to a point, you get what you pay for. Cheaper tripods are made with cheaper materials, so they're not as sturdy, they don't tighten as well, they just don't last as long. So I just don't think cheaping out on tripods is the way to go. You could even question as to whether as a photographer you need a tripod. Image stabilization in modern cameras is so good that you can often handheld at half a second and even in some cases up to a second. I don't like using tripods for photography. I feel like they restrict me too much and I just don't like being restricted, I suppose. They're essential for my video work. I'm always using tripods for video work, so stability is something that's really key to me. Going to the other end of the scale, I'm not convinced it's worth spending like a grand on a tripod. I've never used a tripod that's that expensive. But for example, the Benro Mammoth that I'm using right now is nowhere near that much money and it is quite simply an awesome piece of kit. For its size, it's quite light and it is extremely sturdy. So don't go cheap, but you don't need to go really expensive with tripods either. I think travel tripods with like spindly little legs are also a waste of money because they're just not sturdy. And I know people want lower weight if they're flying or something like that, but something I didn't know that I found out this year is you can take a tripod on as carry-on luggage. And I know that because I watched Maz Pia Everson do it. So next time I go away, I'm just gonna take my tripod clip to the side of my bag and do it that way and not have to worry about the weight in my case. The next one is an absolute minefield and that's camera bags. I think I've probably owned more camera bags than I have tripods because trying to find the right camera bag is actually impossible and I'm not convinced it even exists. For example, my current camera bag is a Shimoda Action X50, which is a lot of money for a bag. I think with photography, it just increases the price of everything. It's like if you put wedding next to something, double the price of it. Same goes for photography. If it wasn't a photography bag, it would probably be half the price. I might not be talking any sense there, but I'm pretty sure that's what's going on. Anyway, even though it's a premium bag, I've actually had to put a different insert in it because I just didn't like the insert. I, like I say, I just don't think there's a bag out there that, that ticks all boxes for all people. Another bag I own is this, which is, Peak Design Everyday Backpack. And I often use that when I'm going into the city or something else. And whilst it's really functional, it's so uncomfortable. I hate wearing it. So I've actually now gone to using just a different standard backpack that is really comfortable. And I've got a little cube insert. This, it was like 10 quid off Amazon. 
and I just put a camera lens in that and I drop it into the backpack and that works so much better and is so nicer to wear than my Peak Design backpack. Yes, it's not as convenient, but like I've said in a previous video, if your camera is in a bag, that is completely useless because you're not gonna use it in a bag. It should be in your hand or around your neck and your bag should really just be for storing the other stuff that you need with you. I think the main problem with bags is they're impossible to test out and they need testing out for you to decide whether or not you can use it long term or not. So maybe it's worth looking at the second hand market and trying to pick up a much cheaper bag off eBay before investing a ridiculous amount of money into something to carry your camera around in. On this note, if you've got any camera bag recommendations or warnings, put them in the comments below because I think that can be helpful for people and I might even do a video on camera bags at some point because it is such a minefield as I say. Also, any other good or bad photography things that you've bought, let me know. The fourth thing is something else I can't show you because again, I don't own it and I haven't owned it for a number of years and that is an ND grad filter or filters. I think these are completely pointless, which I know will rile some people and that is not my intention. But with the dynamic range of modern cameras and the ability to bracket images and easily pull them together in Lightroom, I just don't see how a graduated ND can do any good whatsoever. They, again, like with what I said about tripods, they, I think they just slow me down too much and I like shooting quite reactively and being fiddling around with a grad ND would just really, really do my head in. Conversely, I think ND filters like these ones from Case are really useful for more creatively shooting, especially moving subjects that could be grasses, trees, water, whatever. I think these are worth the money and for video as well, they're essential. But an ND grad filter just isn't worth spending money on given how easy it is to get the same effect, not just with your camera, but in sort of Lightroom and other editing programs as well. As we get into the more controversial end of the talk, the next one is certain lenses, which is deliberately vague because this can mean different things to different people. I think the best way of describing it would maybe be speciality lenses, lenses that you're not gonna use that much, but obviously still cost money. For me, an example would be a macro lens. I think I've used this once this year for a shot in last week's video and um, it was just one shot and I probably could have just skipped it. I didn't need it. Um, so that lens was a complete waste of money as far as I'm concerned. Something else that's probably a good example for me is my 70-200 f2.8. This is a stalwart lens for many people, but for me, I just I barely use it. So maybe I should have got the f4 or maybe I could just do without it altogether. I mainly shoot in between 24 and 70 mil at the moment. That's just my preferred range of focal lens. So do I need that lens? Could I get away without having it? Probably. A good option here would be to rent lenses. When I went to Antarctica earlier this year, for example, I borrowed the 60 to 600 mil lens from Sigma and that was amazing for that trip, but I sent it back to them afterwards and I've not even thought about it since. I have no other use for it other than that trip. So renting lenses when you have a specific need for them is a much better route than buying them and then having them sat on a shelf. The sixth one and most controversial is new camera upgrades. I've spoken about this before, mainly in this video here, but to the majority of people, not to everyone, but to the majority of photographers, upgrading to a new camera is now largely pointless. We are very much in the realms of diminishing returns with new camera releases. It's like iPhones, there is very little change from one to the other. A lot of the changes that are being made are geared towards videographers or very niche shooters. If you're a photographer, you can see in the video I just posted that you can take really good images on cameras that are five, 10, maybe even 15 years old. We can often convince ourselves that buying a new camera will improve our photos, but I'd love it if this were the case, but it's just not. The, the taking of good photos is the photographer, it's not, it's not the camera, which is why photographers get so annoyed where people go, nice image, you must have a really good camera. It's not the camera, it's the photographer. So you'd be better off using the money to concentrate on your skills as a photographer, whether it be workshops, education, or just immersing yourself in photography more by almost buying yourself time, I suppose, taking a dedicated photography trip or similar. Try and 
avoid the temptation of having to upgrade your kit. And I know new kit is fun. I love buying new cameras. There's nothing quite as exciting, but that excitement wears off quite quickly, especially if your skill level isn't where you want it to be. You're just gonna have the same frustrations with regard to light and composition and how to manage these factors in your photography. So try not to think of a new camera as something that is gonna solve your photography problems. It will in some cases, if you are truly limited by your gear, then an upgrade is probably the right path forward, but often it's just not. Before I go, special mention to silly little accessories. I don't know what else to call them, but since I've been concentrating on YouTube a bit more over the last year, I've had so many emails with just pointless photography accessories, literally just problems that don't exist that people are trying to solve, uh, like fangled card readers with storage that are made out of bulletproof metal you know just plug your camera into your computer the usb c lead and that'll transfer your images you just don't need one of those things there are so many of these out there so i think an attitude of less is more is definitely appropriate to photography i think if we can slim down the amount of kit we have it removes choices it allows us to focus more freely on capturing images rather than worrying about how we use this, how we use that, how we use the other. So try and just ignore the allure of new things because quite often they're just not needed. Another thing that's good to invest your money in though is a website to show your work and that brings me on to this week's sponsor who I'd like to thank and that's Squarespace. Squarespace is a great place to build your own website, show your images, host a blog, or set up an online store. I've been using them for over five years since way before they started sponsoring these videos and I've been absolutely delighted with them. The flexibility to build a website with Squarespace is unrivaled and with the 24 seven customer support, you know that if you ever run into any problems, which I've not, then they have you covered. So if you wanna save 10% on a new website or a domain, then head to squarespace.com forward slash Rick Bemington or use my name at checkout. Thanks again to Squarespace and that's it for this video. Like I say, good or bad photography accessories, let me know in the comments below because I think it is a great place to share things like this and people will go down there and look out for them. Thanks for watching, see you next time.